All right, welcome back to Nine Fingered Wrenching. We got our Sea-Doo trailer over here that we're about to kind of refurb a little bit for our Sea-Doo that we just refurbed. I need to hurry and get this thing ready and get it on Marketplace, get it sold for summer's over. <laughs> hey, e, thanks for clicking on our video. Hit that like button for us, we appreciate it. Sit back and watch as we transform this trailer. Gotta get my little rubber mallet. Rubber mallet? We're going to overhaul the hub, give this thing a little freshen up on the paint job, and put on some yeah. new trailer oh, lights. Oh, yeah. I tell you, there's, got, there's some water been in there. All my grease kind of looks like a milkshake. There we go. Yeah, that doesn't look awful. Awesome. They both sound horrible. Yeah, so here's what I was trying to clean off and see. So we got our uh, spindle, there's our nut, there's our cotter pin. So I just wanted to clean the grease off where I could see the cotter pin. Let's see if we can get a hold of that pin. Oh, we're getting there. Come on, pin. I might have to get a little bit more powerful wrench to hold it. Let's try that. You know, really get a hold of it. Let's see what that does. Yes. Got it. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just pull that nut off. Drop it in there. One of her bearings. See if I can persuade it. What's Derek call it? His Tanya Harding? Why is it not coming off of there? Here we go. It's kind of hard to get these little cotter pins straightened back out. Get started anyway. Whoever bent those bent them up real nice. Sure, what's going on there? Things kind of froze on there. We're gonna need some new bearings, new seal for sure, because I just destroyed it getting it off. So the way I cleaned the hubs out, all the old grease, was I just took that paint paddle right there and that cardboard box and just sat there and scooped it all out. And then uh then Ben gets to play with it. Good times. Greasy. Greasy. All right, so you can fold that up and throw it in the trash. Woo. Made it through another week. It's Saturday. Check out my cool coffee mug. So it's Saturday. I don't have to work. So that means I got to work. I got a lot of stuff to do. This garage is a wreck. You ever get so many projects going at the same time, you don't even know which one to work on when it's time to work on something? That's where I'm at right now. I'm just like, geez. And to work on anything, I need to like, clean up the freaking garage. It's bad. Can't even walk, look. I got tools down here in the floor. Two sea dudes crammed up here. I got Mustang parts shoved over here. Stuff's just out everywhere. Benches got crept everywhere. I got this e-recumbent trike I'm working on. I need to get finished up and get out of here. I found a lawnmower on the side of the road, but I already got it running. I really just need to go put it in the shed or sell it or something. Kid went fishing, need to get his bike back on the wall. I got the trailer all apart, so I got the wheels off the trailer. The trailer's out here on 
sitting on a block. Of course, then we got the Mustang project sitting here waiting for me to get parts. I just, I got a lot to do. There's just a lot going on. I got a lot to do. Not to mention the regular stuff like whatever it is my wife wants me to help her with. It's just a lot going on. So, makes me want to go drink. <laughs> I think I'm going to finish stripping everything off the trailer. We got the hubs and everything taken off. So I think I'm going to go ahead and strip the lights off of it and get it to a point where I can go ahead and maybe do a little rebuilding. <laughs> Went and got me some... Got me a big grease gun. I, always, I had a mini grease gun, which was usually good enough for the little things I was doing, but I went ahead and got me a big grease gun. We got hub hub bearing sets. Some Marin Gris. And there's the hubs. I got to get the races pressed out. Um, I got one race out, but anyway, got to get those redone. And then, then we'll, I don't know, we'll, we'll work on something else. I mean, there's always, always stuff to do. Standards, I got deep well metrics. Deep well. It's always fun just flying in something, taking it all apart, remembering how to put it all back together. Well, sometimes that's more difficult. sawhorses out and get it up off the ground a little bit. So the hubs all have like these races inside of them. They're just pressed in there. So uh, you got to get those those old races out. I just got a metal thing here I use for a punch. And I just kind of start working my my way around.
it takes a little bit of time. But you can work your way around, punch them out. All right, so that's, that's three out so far. Got this last one here. Way down and boop. there we go. That's all the races. So the right it just slides in there and butts up against that little shoulder right there, and then the uh, bearing sets in on top of that race. But those erasers kind of have an angle to them, so the bearing sets right into them. We're gonna press in some nice fresh. Brand new races for all of our brand new bearings. I finally found these at Northern Tool. I went to Tractor Supply, Harbor Freight, Lowe's. Finally, finally ended up at Northern Tool before I found them. So there's one of the nice brand new races, a new bearing. That feels nice. There's a new seal. That's a rubber seal, so that goes on the back side of the hub and slips over the axle, so that rubber seal is what's supposed to hold grease inside the hub. So whenever you see all that grease that's on the inside of a, a wheel on a trailer, you know that that seal's gone bad. And it gives a nice shiny new uh, cover for the outside of the hub. I took one of the races that I removed from a, an old hub and I sat and kind of just ground it down and made it smaller, a little bit smaller diameter where it actually fits in there easier. And I'm gonna use that to actually press the new races in. Just get a nice light layer of grease in there. And take one of my new races, put a little light layer of grease on it. And it's ready to push in. out against that little shoulder and here's this side so there's the shoulder that we want to bottom bottom it out against all right that's bottomed out Trying to record in a house full of people is always a struggle, but I love them all. What are you going to do? And Danita knows the struggle all too well as she tries to record her, the official triathlete podcast. Sorry. <laughs> There's two new races pressed in. Yay. Moving on, let's do the other hub. Two old hubs with new races. Heck yeah. Alright, so next we got a pack of bearings with grease. I don't have a tub of grease. So I'm going to start off just trying to pump some. So from there, I'm gonna gather up what I got left in my my hand here, try to get my palm. And just go around 
and just rake it into those bearings. You just want to cram as much of it in there as you can. Go ahead and drop her down in the hub there. While I'm all greased up here, I'm going to go ahead and do this other bearing. Now, where I've got that in there, I'm just going to go around and just kind of fill that little area up with grease. And then we're going to push the seal in there. So this is the back side of the hub. You know, the, there's your lug bolts for your wheel. So that's the back side. On the back side of the hub, that's where you get this seal. It goes on, and that seal, rubber seal, slides over the spindle on the axle. Put a little lube on the seal there, and while I got it in my hand, and got grease on my hand, I'm gonna go ahead and lube up this inner seal that's gonna slide over the spindle. I'm gonna go ahead and put some grease in the back side of the seal. Put that stuff that you spray on rust that's supposed to stop the rust rust neutralizer um it's kind of neat so this little bit of surface rust that was around there i i just hosed it down with rust neutralizer looks like it it does a it does a good job supposedly it's supposed to cure and give you a, a paintable surface we're gonna throw a little spray paint on top of it so we'll see i mean it looks pretty good We'll see. Right now I'm gonna go ahead and kind of lightly coat the wheels. I've got some new tires coming, so I can just spray the wheels with those tires on there. Fresh little little paint on there, never hurt, never hurt anything. I started to um, save on the the Dixie Craft logo there, and I decided to uh, just go ahead and paint over it. I did hit my little tag there just a little bit. I I think I can just scrub that off there. Pretty easy though. But yeah, let it dry and we can start reassembling this. All right, so we. 
got the new seal that we pressed in and we got our fresh bearing and everything's all packed up on this side so now we're going to gently try to slip it over the axle that seal you want to be careful with and try not to mess it up okay we're all the way on it what I do to my bearing let me get my bearings. <laughs> Where am I? Traditional bearing packing. You want a nice little wad of grease in the palm of your hand. And you got that gap right around there. And you basically just want to come and take small bites and just push grease and see how it starts coming out of the bearings and see how it's squishing out of the top there we want to just keep on sometimes you have, might have to recapture get it back in your palm again but we just want to work our way around that bearing just packing as much grease up in there into those little roller bearings as we can. Like I say, you want to see it start coming out the top. We'll work our way on around. Just cram it as much grease up in there as we can. See how it's coming out the top? That's how you know you got it up in there good. We'll go around another time here. But that's the old school way to do it. And I think it probably still works the best. I'm trying to squirt as much grease into that hub as I can before I put that last bearing in. Hey, I'm going to need a little rubber mallet to pop this this cap on. I'm about to fill it up with grease. So I just got the castle nut on there. So there's the hole that your cotter pan goes through. So you gotta tighten your castle nut up until it's tight and you don't feel any play side to side in your hub, but it still spins. And then you gotta make sure the castle nut's lined up to where you can drop your pin in. And then once you get your pin in, I've seen people argue online about how to how to do this. On a hub, from what I've gathered, you just take both ends of your pin and just bend them up like that. Simple as that. We'll cram just a little bit more grease in there. Well, this thing's kind of being a little aggravating. I wish I had something the size of that lip right there that I could put over the top and just really hit it. Ouch. Careful, it'll pinch your fingers. <laughs> um, maybe I'll just get me a piece of wood where I can like really smack it and maybe it won't hurt the piece of wood and the hammer work pretty good. I got it in there without totally destroying the, the cap. And we got our grease fitting in the bag back here. I'm gonna try to see if I can just go ahead and pump a little bit in there. Thank you. 
Maybe after this, I'll go fishing. That boy right there sure does love to fish. <laughs> One handed working the grease gun. What kind of nut? Uh, castle. Castle nut. You know why they call it a castle nut? It looks like castle. <laughs> it's exactly right. <laughs> You're a smart boy. Mm -hmm. You're a smart boy. Boy, about to let me not put my cotter pan in. Hey, Daddy, in the butt. Hey there, Daisy. I know you was wondering when we was gonna have rebuilt hubs. Mm-hmm. Like Daisy. All right, we're out here. We're still working on this trailer. New, new tire just came in today. Nice. I've never changed that trailer tire. I watched some guys do it on on the YouTubes, and it looks like fun. Um, so we're gonna try it. All right, tires out. Then we gotta break that feed loose. And I've seen guys put jacks on it and all kinds of stuff. That one's on there a little tighter, huh? There we go. Now, all the guys on the video had these long pry bars. You see what I just did there? Mm -hmm. I took this bead and pushed it down to where it could get into the center where it's a little deeper. There we go. Hold that right there. These are gonna be like even stiffer. I'm just gonna spray this bead down a little bit with some bike wash so it's you know it's kind of soapy. We used to do this with bicycle tires too. challenge is we got to get it out enough onto the bead where we can hit it with a blast of air pop it up oh it's on there I'm gonna put 40 pounds in them right now
back on. Boom. Because that's plastic, like when you tighten it up, don't feel like crazy. Yeah, it still feels like you should tighten it, but you just feel like it would break. We're going to put on some new trailer lights. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing right now. We're about to do that right now. Probably done the easy part, just bolting the lights up to the to the trailer. I kind of pre-routed the wires through the trailer, but got a lot of excess still out. So right now, I'm just going ahead and taping, taping it up. A little extra protection there. taped up there. Go ahead and see if we can't dress up in. It's got the plug on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that looks good. Semi pro. So I want to kind of attach this here to where it's secured and that, that way I'm not going to ever get any tugging on the wires. And also, you know, we got to put our ground, mount our ground on here. We may drill a hole to where we can zip tie that to the side. That could help. Probably do a good job with it. As far as the ground goes, we could just ground. We could probably just do a little self-tapper or something right there. All right, so now we got our ground. I got that zip tied there, so that'll help keep that secured, safe from any kind of extra tension being put on the wire. All right, we got our little side marker lights there. We're gonna go right here. The last one had a single bolt that bolted the light on, and then it had a spot for the wire. This one's got two bolts and one wire, so I guess I'm just gonna put my wire through there, cover up that hole, and then I'll have to drill me two more holes where I can bolt that in. I'm gonna drill one hole first. marker light side marker light installed there our other side marker light installed so basically they're pretty simple to hook up wire coming out of the back of the light i think i'm just going to put a little heat shrink on it just for a little extra protection these are submersible i can almost want to like silk on that all right so i think i'm going to pull the white wire out and just kind of ground it to the frame right there In behind that washer. I like putting a washer on there when I'm tightening it down because I feel like if you don't put a washer down, the friction of just the screw spinning just tears the wire on the wire guides there's no grommet or anything in there which i don't like so i'm just kind of figuring out where the wire is going to sit putting some friction tape around the wire as a little protection grabbing a zip tie i figured the zip tie for one you know it's going to keep it looking neater but it's also going to keep it from moving maybe keep it from wearing through the insulation all right trailer lights are are done I need the, my bumper to be basically right here, about one foot. I think I need that thing about right there. But we're about to go ahead and cut these off and then try to get that mounted and get our winch mounted. <laughs> then we should be ready to try to put a ski on it and everything will be ready to go. Let's go outside and cut them. So we lost our like bolt for like locking it in place. What I'll do is I'll just end up just drilling all the way through and I'll get a bolt that, that just goes all the way through it. Locks it in place. We can overcome that, adapt and overcome. Nine finger wrench. <laughs> I got my sticker crew putting stickers on the trailer. Looking good. James doing some fine trimming there. 
Ben's doing some tedious sticker placement, perfecting. That does look good. Man, nobody should ever run over that trailer. They should see it. Oh, here, let me show everybody the light test. We got our lights all wired up. I got a trailer plug. All right, so remember our white wire is our ground wire and our brown wire runs all the lights. And then we got our turn signals. We got our what, left turn signal mm -hmm. and our right turn signal. Pretty cool. So the trailer itself is like a part of the circuit because the lights hooked to the trailer and the plugs hooked to the trailer. So that's finishing one half of each circuit. The ground wire, bar, ground war. Say it with me. Ground war, war. Can you say it, Jane? Ground war. War, yeah. And what do we change in the motor? Earl, change the Earl. Everybody say it with me, change Earl. I got it, I got it. Say change, change the? Change the Earl. Earl, that, thank you. That might be a pretty good spot. I think we can probably do that. And then I'll just need to get a bolt to go through this. All right, let's hook it up. Let me get some nuts. So I'm gonna need a bolt go through two and a half inches plus room to run it on it. Well, I lined them up good. <laughs> that works. Let's look back at this old ski we brought home. All the stuff we've done to it. Let's take a moment and remember what it looked like. That old yellow seat cover. Oxidized hole, all dull. Missing the GTX cover on the front of the hood. No, no handlebar covers. Wore out traction mats. Trader was rusty with busted lights. We took a lot of time and care to bring this old girl back around. Now, let's go take a look at it now and see what we got. There's our sea dew we picked up off the of Facebook Marketplace. All restored, trailer redone. Trailer looking good. Some new lights on there. Trailer turned out real nice. Ski turned out nice. Some nine finger wrenching right there. Once again, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for tuning in to Nine Fingered Wrenching. It means the world to us that you watch. Please click that like button let YouTube know you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me and my family, and we appreciate it very much. Now that we finished up with the sea dew, we got Mustang content on the way. And as always, don't forget, like, share, subscribe. Peace. <laughs>